one year later, is DC Universe still worth it? Or should I say 52 weeks later, since it is DC after all and they love that number for some reason? Well, let's talk about it here on Comic Universe. What up guys and welcome to the Webster's Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show, it's Jay here for the Comic Universe and I'm back once again and this time I'm here to do a topic video talking about DC Universe since this is officially the one year anniversary since the launch date of the app, you know, in terms of like the official release. So, before I get started on that, I want to say a big thank you to the entire universe for everyone who, uh, you know, has been with us and has been supporting us through this whole change, you know, with C-Dub's departure and the entry of our two new members, you know, Brian and Manos, you guys have been so welcoming and positive and we really appreciate all the love to our new guys and, you know, to us in this whole transitionary period, so... I just want to extend a big thank you to each and every one of you. You guys are awesome. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this topic. Is DC Universe still worth it one year later? Honestly, in my opinion, the quick answer to this is of course yes. So, obviously, I'm a DC fan. I love DC Comics, I love Marvel, both equally, and, you know, with all the original content that's coming on here let's kind of talk about each piece that has come out so far and whether or not it has been worth it so first obviously let's start off with Titan season one Titan season one while it did have a rough start overall it ended really well and I ended up really enjoying it by the end and season two you know after that first episode has really kicked off and I am really enjoying it. Cannot wait to see what happens next. So, you know, in my book, Young Justice is definitely, you know, a success along with Titans. Uh, going to Young Justice, though, let's talk about that. Uh, you know, after such a long hiatus, Young Justice was still pretty solid. I really liked the developments that we made you know, within the time jump, and of course exploring new characters, you know, seeing what our old favorites have been up to, the different storylines. Overall, Young Justice Outsiders was a real solid start to this new era of Young Justice, and I enjoyed it a lot. So I would also, like I said, consider Young Justice to be a hit within the uh, DC Universe original catalog. Now, let's move on to Swamp Thing. So Swamp Thing is a much sadder case where Swamp Thing started off really promising but got cut short, you know, too soon due to like, you know, a budgetary mix up. And unfortunately, you know, they weren't able to complete it properly. And so we got the last episode that we got which was decent, but man, I wish it had ended, you know, stronger. And there were a lot of, you know, open-ended cliffhangers. And we're probably never going to see the completion of that story. So it's definitely sad. I'm going to have to, you know, count Swamp Thing as a miss. As much as I hate to admit it. Because, you know, like, I really enjoyed that show while it was going. But as soon as it got canceled, that momentum just dropped for me. So... Now, let's talk about another major hit, probably the most unexpected hit on the DC Universe original content roster, and that is, of course, Doom Patrol. Now, granted, I myself have not finished Doom Patrol Season 1 because I just was really busy at the time and did not have time to like watch the rest of the episodes. I got about halfway through, absolutely loved it. And you know, from what I've heard from everyone who's finished this show, including Brian, it is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait for season two of Doom Patrol. And in my opinion, even though I didn't complete the season, 
I do intend to go back and watch it to, you know, catch up in time for season two. And personally, I really enjoyed it. So I definitely consider Doom Patrol season one a hit in terms of DC Universe. Now, let's talk about the other features within the app. So something cool about DC Universe is you can search a character and they will pull up, you know, some comics they've been in, a little bio, maybe a couple episodes of an animated series or some movies. I think it's really cool that they kind of like pull different resources and like show you things, you know, that characters have been in. I think that's a really nice feature. It definitely like helps you get familiar with a character. Like let's say, you know, you're really hyped for the Joker movie coming up. You search the Joker, they'll pull up like Long Halloween, The Killing Joke, you know, some iconic Joker stories, some Joker episodes from Batman the Animated Series, and different things like that. I think it's definitely an awesome feature. Talking about awesome features, you know, DC, in terms of animated stuff, is one of the best. They really pride themselves on their animated properties, and, you know, I'm so glad we have a home for, like, all of them. Most, if not all, of the iconic, classic DC animated movies are on the DC Universe, and the newer ones get placed on there like a week after either its digital release or home video release. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but you don't necessarily have to buy the DC animated universe uh, movies anymore because you know you just gotta wait a little bit and they'll be available on DC Universe so it definitely makes the service worth it in my opinion especially if you are a fan of DC animation so like that's again another plus for DC Universe something that I really think goes underrated on the DC Universe app is the comic reading experience that they give you on the app. Now me personally, I have not read, you know, floppies in a long time. I don't really, you know, read single issues as often as I used to anymore. But like DC Universe, they have this thing where like, you know, basically like every month or so, you'll get the stuff from like last month or two months ago, uh, like all in like one release and you can like binge read. So it's very convenient for me, you know, because, you know, I don't read single issues anymore and, you know, DC's trade schedule is very wonky. So like, you know, it takes quite a while for the trades to come out. So it's really convenient to be able to read, you know, your comics on the DC Universe app. And I think that's really dope. And I actually really like the like guided view interface. It's actually really simple, very clean. And, you know, you get to read your comics in HD, and that's always dope, in my opinion. So, I think that's a really cool feature. It's really dope. I enjoy it a lot. Um, also, there's, of course, DC Daily, the, you know, weekly DC news, you know, show that is on the app. I really like it. It's a good source of news in terms of everything that's coming out from DC. So, uh, you know, it's definitely useful for us here on Comic Universe, you know, collecting news pieces and stuff like that. It helps us definitely keep up to date. And, you know, I really like a lot of the personalities that they have involved there. It seems really fun. They definitely feel like real fans. It's not just like people being paid to talk about this stuff. They really do care about what they're talking about. So, again, really enjoy that. Overall, again, I'm not being paid to shill for DC. I'm just here to say, as a DC fan, I definitely think the DC Universe app is totally worth it. I mean, we haven't even seen everything they have to offer here yet. The Harley Quinn cartoon hasn't come out yet. The Stargirl cartoon, or the Stargirl, you know, live action show hasn't come out yet. That's been pushed back, but I cannot wait for both of those to come out. Really excited for that. And I can't wait to see what other great content they have to offer on here. Plus, you know, they have all the classic live action shows from our childhoods up here. Like, of course, uh, you know, Superman, Lois and Clark, The Adventures of Lois and Clark, that classic series. They've got, you know, the Wonder Woman 77. They've got Batman 66. They've even got, like, the old Shazam cartoon with TV's Michael Gray. It's pretty dope. 
Again, it's everything a DC fan could ever want, and it's super affordable. You could either pay like the, you know, eight buck a month version, or you could just pay $70 for the whole year, which, you know, saves you a lot of money. Not being paid to shill, I'll say it one more time, I just really enjoyed this app. And like I said, I would have to say, one year later, the DC Universe app is definitely worth it in my opinion. But let me know in the comments down below what you think. If you are a user of the DC Universe app, do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think, you know, there's some issues still to work out? What's your favorite piece of programming from the DC Universe app? Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what we do here and you want to see more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. It's, you know, me, Zilla, Brian, and Manos, you know, all updating you with brand new content. So definitely, if you want to hear more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. In the outro card, I will leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm things you might like, which I hope you do, and I will leave linked our latest upload in case you're new here and you want to see what the channel has to offer. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mr. Reviews. And like I always say, once Comfort Geek, always Comfort Geek. And once a DC fan, always a DC fan. Till next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hopefully I'll see you next time in the universe. <laughs>